This content was brought to you by ReloQuest, your innovative travel management solution. Welcome to the Service Department News Podcast, where we discuss all the latest news and developments from across the service department, apart hotel and extended stay sectors. Okay, today I'm talking to Dean Schreiber, CEO of Oakwood. Um, Dean, the company has recently made uh, quite a big step to focus solely on property management. Um, and exiting the agency side of the business. What were the main reasons behind that? Oh, it's a great question, George. I think um, we've been we've been in the uh, the corporate housing or the agency solutions business for quite some time now. We've managed to build a, quite a strong uh, customer base, and and you know, we've very much seen that growth of our our portfolio in Asia that we were we, that was being fed from this this corporate solution side of our business, and we decided that. Um, that it was a time to, to refocus on, on what our priorities were, and our customers were almost pushing in this, us in that direction. They wanted to have that end-to-end Oakwood experience, um, and we're asking us, well, we're staying with you in Singapore, we're staying with you in Bangkok. Do you have anything in Tokyo? Do you have anything in uh, in Penang? Do you have anything in, in some of the other regional uh, hubs? And, and we said, well, actually, we, we think that there's something in this, that they're, they're demanding, they have expectations from us, and therefore, we wanted to, to focus on growing those those assets. And of course, we with the strength in Asia and the portfolio growth that we've had, we wanted then to take that globally and, and concentrate also in the, in the US market, in Europe, in the Middle East, and in, even as far as Africa now. Um, okay. I think we, we learned a lot from our customers in, in what, they were, what they were expecting. And we couldn't necessarily guarantee that they were expecting that in some of the supply chain that we were working with. So wanted to assure them that if they stayed with Oakwood, they book with Oakwood, they would get that end-to-end Oakwood experience. Mm-hmm. And tell us about the the, the partnership with, with Dwellworks and how, how long was that in the pipeline before the, the, the pandemic hit? Well, as we started to look at where we wanted to grow in, in, our, in, in, our, in our strategy, um, it kind of got out into the marketplace that, that we were looking to exit. So we entertained quite a few um, um, requests for people interested in, in buying that part of the business. Um, probably started looking at it just before uh, December, just before the year end, the calendar year end, um, as we were entertaining some of those requests, it quickly emerged that Dwellworks is really the partner that we felt most comfortable working with. Um, we liked the fact that they were a destination service provider and they could provide our customers um, that, that total solution by, by strategically working with them. It wasn't just a, a pure acquisition or a pure licensing agreement that we ended into. We, we sort of thought about this a little bit deeper and went, this would make sense to work with them. Our customers already know us. Um, they've worked with Dwellworks in, in looking at uh, service provisions, so um, uh, it made natural sense. So probably around about November, December, we, we really were starting to talk seriously with them. Um, we got to the stage, we had a sort of a deadline of where we wanted to exit or transition out of the solutions business. Um, and then, of course, COVID hit sort of that really full on around um, early, uh, late February, early March, I guess. So it wasn't too too long before that the, the, the discussions got serious, and then bam, right in the middle of it, that's when that's when everything happened. Mm-hmm. Um, in in the US, Bridge Street seems to be moving in the opposite direction from you. It's it's um, closing down most of its uh, branded managed properties and concentrating on 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 the agency side. Do you think? Um, I mean, Oakwood and Bridge Street were two of the largest sort of hybrid operator agencies. Do you think? we're starting to see the end of that model or is it or is it still tenable for some companies look i think every company has has core competencies and um, we had the core competency in that in the solution side of the business and that's how we build our customer base um, when our when our customers changed um, and, and had different demands we had to reinvent ourselves and and find a new core competency and we we took the core competency that we had in the hospitality model the service department model that we were having in asia and we we said okay well let's let's concentrate on that new core competency i think i think people will do that i think people will tend to move towards um something that they feel um that they can add more value to whether it be for their stakeholders or for the customers i don't think we'll see i don't think we'll see more um the hybrid model out there much longer um, I think you know Bridge Street is making the the right decision for them. We've made the right decision for us. I think there's just specialists in every field, and and I, and I think that's I think what's that's what the customer expects. It's better to be great in one thing than good in in, in everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got obviously got properties um, uh, across Asia and in the US. How has occupancy been in general? I mean, has it varied much regionally? 
and and are you starting to see increased demand as um you know lockdown restrictions are, are eased in, in various areas well i think we would have been would be naive to think that we weren't uh, um, affected by the um uh, that we were immune to the whole COVID 19 situation i think um we certainly weren't immune um our, our transit business obviously got hit, but we were certainly resilient uh, to the whole COVID-19 experience uh, because of the, we had that strong base that's, that's, that, we, that exists in a service department. So we've managed to maintain a pretty decent level of occupancy um, um, somewhere in the, in most cases, probably around the 60, 70% occupancy. I mean, there's been some pockets uh, of, of properties that, are, that were adversely affected because of a, res, a reliance on short stay, but it just goes to prove that the service department model is so is so resilient in any sort of um, market shift that we, we, whether it be a, a coup in Thailand, whether it be a um, the pandemic that we're experiencing, whether it's a disaster somewhere else, I think we were able to to survive that, and and that's really apparent now. Um, we, you know, I think in in some properties in our in our China properties, we're seeing some strong recovery. Um, Singapore, I think, even itself has had the highest occupancy. In any region, um, it's still sitting around the 75, 80 percent occupancy mark. So um, it, interesting. I think if every country has its own story to tell. Um, but across the board, we've I think that we haven't closed up, up any properties due to performance. We had two properties closed in Thailand because the government closed them down due to their own government restrictions. But I think it's, it's been great. I think the owners been delighted that we've been able to stay open and that we've been able to uh, cover our fixed costs of service loans. Um, I, I, you know, I think they're all we've we've worked with them on 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 keeping the business going. Um, so I, I think it's going to be interesting to see now from investment and uh, developers and and which model they're going to pursue. We're we're getting a lot of a lot of requests for our model now. A lot of developers coming to us and saying, "Hey, you know, this service the model partner model this looks pretty good." And of course, we're seeing a lot of the hotel industry players talk about shifting some of their inventory into this long stay service department kind of uh, market space. So I think we've, we've come out of this and, and uh, quite shining. So the pandemic hasn't affected your future pipeline negatively. And in fact, it might even have given it a boost. It certainly has. I think we, we know, we've, we've seen some effect in construction, of course, because construction sites have been closed down in, in places like Japan. Uh, um, I believe they closed them down pretty much throughout Asia. Um, so we have seen a slowdown of our opening dates, but we certainly haven't seen a slowdown in our pipeline. In fact, as you said, we've seen that grow and um, we've actually even opened a property during this COVID time. We opened a, a property in Jakarta near the airport and we've actually signed a couple of deals as well, um, despite COVID-19 happening. So I'm um, you know, very, very, very optimistic about, um, about the growth of the service department model um, as an investment for an owner and a developer. And what about your plans to move into the hotel and resort space? We spoke um, at the Service Department Summit Asia in, in Bangkok a while back, and that was a kind of um, a, a potentially a, a new venture for you. Has, has that move become more or less attractive in, in the light of the pandemic? You have, a, you have a great memory, George. I have to be careful what I say to you uh, uh, in the future. But um, I, look, I th yes, we, we've actually moved into that space now. We've, we've signed, um, as, as we just mentioned earlier, we had signed two properties in Pattaya and Phuket, the ones that are closed, unfortunately, just at the moment because of the government regulations. But we've we've moved into that space, and I think um, we've also signed a, a couple of ski resorts in China that are, are being built for for the Winter Olympics. We really feel that this is a strong space to play in, in, in this leisure market, these resort destinations, and I think even more so now, where the big hot topics are hygiene and and um, and safety and security and social distancing. We, you know. We've always had a very strong record for, for hygiene, particularly in the fact that service departments don't have that, that transient business just churning through the doors, um, that there's not necessarily a lot of restaurants or, or public spaces that, that guests hang out in. So we already, we already uh, um, you know, recognise as probably a safer place to stay, to be able to self-cater in the room, but have some hospitality driven services when needed. So we think that the leisure market the, you know, will, will grow as a result of COVID-19. We think that people will also be looking for the same type of product in destinations and resorts. And so we think we're very well, you know, we, we've, I think our strategy is great that we, we've gone after this market and we're certainly going to pursue it even further. Um, Thailand is obviously a, a key key destination for, for resorts. Um, and as, as we said back then when we spoke, um, we've 
we've entered into that space in Phuket and Patia and some more that we're in discussions with owners. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that space. Again, if you look at ski resorts, for example, people don't go for two or three nights to a ski resort. They go for a week, 10 days, uh, maybe even longer. Um, you see a lot of people going to the summer resort destinations to escape their harsh winters. So our model of, of being able to have your own facilities in the room, your kitchen, your washing machine, your dishwasher, um, and then still be able to pick up the phone and call if you want room service delivery or or you want um, your room clean daily. Um, just ideal. I think we're very excited about it. Great. Dean, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, George. Great speaking to you again. Thanks for listening to the Service Department News podcast. If you'd like to keep up to date with all the latest industry news, head over to servicedepartmentnews.com and sign up to our twice-weekly newsletter. Service Department News is part of the International Hospitality Media Portfolio. This November, IHM is launching the Urban Living Festival in London, welcoming urban innovators and investors at the cutting edge of contemporary hospitality and real estate. Don't miss out on a great opportunity to reconnect with your peers and investors face to face while helping to define where we stay, live and work. For more details, visit urbanlivingfestival.com.